we came up to Scotland on a holiday and we saw a, a little bit of land advertised for sale in Tobermory and so we came up to see it and thought it was a most wonderful place and we actually realised also that here although there were few people mi having a few cows there was no um, what you might call a, a serious producer who could actually serve the shops, the whole population, and the milk came in on freight with on the on the boats. It was completely different from now. It was completely different, and it was an amazing thing. Uh, three months later, Jeff again was looking in the farming press, and he saw Skibrua for sale, a derelict farm um, on the Isle of Mull. Um, it was a long haul, I can tell you that. Um, it was many, many miles up and down the motorway. You cannot imagine moving a whole farm eventually. But we had to put the roof on, we had to get electricity, we had to get fencing, you know, you name it, there was nothing here. Um, they, Garth was 16, Brendan was 18, and they, they built the place and, you know, that's how it's continued. So we've been making cheese for 30 odd years here. Um, built the farm up from very much a ruin. We've done it all ourselves as an entirely family, it was entirely family run. Through the summer we get loads of tourists, so we were producing liquid milk and then at either end of the tourist season we needed to do something with the milk. We made cheese um, and then all the machinery for the liquid milk broke down eventually <laughs> and we carried on making cheese from about 2000. But Jeff certainly was from no farming family but he was very conscious of the fragility of, of, of the environment and needing to be, everything needing to be uh, not a thing, to, to him, nothing, it was not a thing of the moment, it's a, it's a long-term thing. You're, 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 guard, you're looking after the land for the next generation, and for all the people, for all the hundreds and thousands of people who might come after you, hopefully. Our herd over the years, the herd has changed a fair amount. We've obviously started um, very traditionally for the UK with British Frisians. Um, and we're now using brown Swiss, Swedish and Norwegian red. So we're getting a real big variation of the cows and markings and beautiful tiger striped animals. And they're all producing a decent milk which is very even with good high protein and fat for the cheese. And, but it's particularly exciting to make cheese. That's the, I mean, we, we did the liquid milk for all those years. But I can tell you, it was wonderful. It was actually, it was like a huge release when we eventually gave it up to just just do cheese because we had to pasteurise the milk. You know, we eventually got to the stage when our cartoning machine was falling to pieces, and it was lovely to make cheese and so exciting and and so interesting and not knowing quite when you opened up the cloth and cut into the cheese, what was going to be there, and it was always magic. I mean, it was always a bit of a magic to me. You know, our cheese is just a, a, a total result of where the cows live, really, isn't it? Every day is different. Every time the cows go to a different field, they come back with a different different type of cheese and I mean, we've just tasted eight months worth of cheese and every single batch was different. It was so exciting, I can't tell you um, how exciting it was to actually make cheese in September and sell it the next June or the next, when the Easter time or whatever and it was incredibly exciting to, to the, first of all anyone would want it, um, you know, would it was like a, a buzz, <laughs> um, and it's always exciting because you never know what you're going to get, really. Certainly didn't at that time because it was just all a learning, a huge learning curve, and um, we've just learned as we go along, really.